Hello. Yeah, what's going on, man? Oh, not much. Just sitting. All right, all right. So, are you are you like driving right now? Because your phone says uh, no, no, no. Okay, your phone says Florida. So that's where you from? Yeah, I'm from near Jacksonville. Well, I I tell you right now, I'm I'm sitting in fucking traffic right now. I seventy five heading into <laughs> Florida, bro. What the uh, hell are you doing down there, man? Hey, we got hey, got a load, bro. Got a load. When that hot load needs to be down in Florida, my 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 fleet manager know who to call. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting. Uh, no, I'm sitting. Uh, I'm sitting up in Memphis, Indiana, up here at the love. Michael in the building. All right, my G. So what's going on with you, man? Why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself? Uh, let everybody know who you are, where you hail from, and uh, what you was doing before trucking. Um, name's Michael. I'm from just outside of Jacksonville, Florida, a small town called Middleburg. I've been in this industry going on 11 and a half years, and I did, God, I did almost everything before it. Okay. I did, I did retail, fast food, restaurant. All the stuff you normally do when you're growing up. I did electrical. I was a union electrician's apprentice. Like I said, I did everything. Okay, that's what's up. Jack of all trades before you jumped up into this uh, industry. Uh, coming up from Florida, man, uh, you know, you, you 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 live in the tourist spot. You know what I'm saying? You down here with uh, Universal. You down here with the Disney's. Uh, the good, um, good, the 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 good tar Seminole Hard Rock Casino, man. How how is it? How is it? And how was it growing up down in Florida, man? I live about twenty or thirty minutes outside of Jacksonville, so we really didn't have the tourist like the out of towner problem. Mm -hmm. Um, I love living in Florida. I'll never leave. Born and raised, I'm I'm fourth generation living in Florida. So yeah. it, it it's in my blood. I mean, so you say you 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 stand down in the sunshine state, even though that the traffic and everything down here. You know, for trucking, it's bad for trucking down here, though. For real, for real. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Rates are horrible. I got. I've been. I've been around the business my whole life. I'm a third generation driver. Mm -hmm. So my family, we got we got closing in on a hundred years of oh. experience. Wow. Okay, that's what's up, my G. So you started. So how how did you start it out? Like with your fathers, your grandfather, or how how did you I, start it out? Well, my grandfather started in the late in the early sixties, mm -hmm. calling for a feed mill, Florida feed mill, mm -hmm. uh, back when the biggest trailer was thirty five foot. Mm. And he did that for twenty five years. He went to Watkins Motor Lines running doubles. Did that for 27 years before he retired. My dad's been hauling cars for 34 years for a company, for the same company. Mm -hmm. He got with somebody, he got with somebody to jump when they opened up, and he's been there. He's number two in seniority. Mm -hmm. So, and I just tried, like, like you said, I tried everything. Nothing worked out. I, I literally one day said, screw it, I'm getting my CDL. So your grand and so was you grandfather was you grandfathered in as far as getting your CDL no. or you had to go to school? No, they, no, no, they didn't. Florida still at the time. Florida has at the time and has since the seventies required CDL. Um, I went to a small technical college, career college, mm -hmm. uh, about twenty minutes from the house for five weeks. Actually, learned how to drive a truck. Um, say so you you saying back then the, you saying back then technical colleges and stuff like that actually taught you how to drive a truck. Yeah, well, I went. I'll tell you the company. It was Bradford Union Area Career Technical Center. Mm -hmm. They've been around for sixty years plus. They do mechanical. They do diesel mech. They do electrical. They do trucking. They do all kinds of training. Roadmaster is technically, and most people think, oh, you went to Roadmaster. No. I didn't go to a, a, a CDL print shop huh? like Roadmaster. I went to somebody, and it's even worse now that Roadmaster is owned by Warner. Right. 
So I'm not saying that there aren't some good instructors at some of these other places, but you can see the difference in somebody who is trained on how to actually operate the truck and someone who was given basic knowledge. Just like Roadmaster, they, they, they just give you enough knowledge to pass the test. That's it. 20, what is it now? Uh, you can get your CDL in 19 days. Do you uh, think you but no, I went to school. You you don't think you I don't think ni- you don't think nineteen days is enough time to actually teach somebody to drive a truck. Not not when you got you, the trainer. Yeah, because I had a buddy who went through Roadmaster and that's what he told me. It's you in the in the primary seat, the trainer in the jump seat, and you got they've either modified the, the rear yeah, you and got you got two, two other, other guys. guys and the, and the roadmasters are, are usually around major cities, so they really kind of try and keep you off the interstate mm-hmm. until you get at least a weekend. And I've, I've done, I was actually an instructor at one point. I, I was a CDL instructor mm-hmm. uh, a few years back. And I know how it is. It's, and this was with a different technical college. Their course was we give them the basic knowledge so that we get paid. That was it. And it's it's kind of crazy uh, now with, with everything that's going on, you know, like with the driver, quote, unquote, driver shortage and shortage. everything. And you got everybody that's – you got everybody in the Facebook group that just just piling in. Hey, I got my CDLs. And I'm like, bro, it's CDL without the S. Please stop doing that. I know some <laughs> – I, I keep saying oh. I know some of y'all is probably just – playing on the on the word but i mean you know it's just so many people that's 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 coming into this industry like every day so how is it possible that it's a driver shortage with people piling into this industry every day it and i'll give you an example in a minute it's not an actual driver shortage we have nope. plenty of we have plenty of, I shouldn't say drivers. We have plenty of steering wheel holders. Mm-hmm. It's quality professional drivers. Those that want to come out here and run. I've talked to plenty of guys with, uh, when I was at other carriers that oh, I'm only going to run six hours a day. Well, then you ain't going to make any money. Mm-hmm. You ain't going to get nothing accomplished. Mm-hmm. And you said that, you know, I said that they just train you to get your license. Mm-hmm. I went, I was at a carrier, I was a tester, I was a road tester for them. So whenever guys came into orientation and I was in town, hey, we need you to test these guys. I had a guy, his first license was a CDL. Never had a driver's license of any other type, went straight from being a walker to having a CDL. Well, you you can't it from do it. After uh, after February sep or is it is either February second or February second or seventh of next year, you won't be able to do that no more. <laughs> no. Which is which, which people have been asking for for decades. They want more stringent requirements, which is a good thing in some ways. But just like hours of service, my grandfather drove back in the days of. No hours of service. You drove until you got tired. Mm-hmm. My dad, the end of the day, you pull over, get a cu- you pull over, get a couple of hours of sleep, and get right back at it. Yeah, my dad's been on paper logs up until five or six years ago. Mm-hmm. He's been in manuals his entire career. He loves his automatic now. <laughs> it took him. It took him a few months, like it takes anybody, because. My first six years was all manual, mm-hmm. and then automatic started taking over. So I've been doing this eleven years, eleven and a half, and I love I love my automatic. I do because I drive a twenty twenty two Freightliner. I love my truck. I got I just, you. There are days. There are days I want that stick sitting next to me, so I have a little bit more control. Do you think? Uh, do, do you think? Uh, with automatics because you know let let a veteran driver old school dumb down do you think the manual 
uh, being that you got to do so much, you got to, you know, you got to push on the clutch. You got to shift the gears. You got to upshift. You got to do all that type of stuff. Do you think with all that's going on, it would alleviate some of the driver issues that's going on right now without a driver that's having, you know, just having, you know, just put it in drive and go? I, I think one of the things I've noticed now that automatics have become the standard, the, 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 the new normal, I've seen more drivers that are not paying attention to the road because like you said, they put it in drive and go. Mm-hmm. The truck now, the trucks now have lane keep assist. They have radar. We used to have to do the whole seven second count. Now the truck does it for us. Mm-hmm. We go through construction zones. It's pretty tight. Now the truck does everything for us. And I have all those systems. I turn them off half the time because mm-hmm. I want to have control of my vehicle. Um, I think if we had manuals, we would have less distracted driving because they wouldn't be able to sit here going uphill and going through town and just letting the truck do all the work. They'd actually have to pay attention. They'd have to, they'd have to maintain control. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, man. Well, you know, you, you was in my, uh, you was, you, you seen a video. You, you rocked out on a video. You was in my comment session and, uh, you was like, yo, um, I want to talk about this company. Um, that company happens to be Hirschbach. You uh, decided yep. to you decided to reach out and you want uh, to talk a little bit more. So, what do you what do you want the people to know about Hirschbach? First thing first, are are you with them now or have you drove for them? Yeah. No, um, I'm actually with them now. I've only been with them for about four and a half months. Mm-hmm. Um, you actually did an MT, an MTC with a carrier I used to work with, Lessers. You did it back early last year. Okay. Lesser, Lessers no longer exists. Okay. First box bought them out. Okay. You know what? In it's, June, it's funny that I talked to, that I just got finished talking to a female driver that used to work or that used to drive for Lessers. And she told me that. Hirschbach has brought them out and you guys, Mm -hmm. so you, what you, you was driving for lessers before, uh, the, the transition over to Hirschbach. I was with lessers for about, uh, about 15 months. Um, and we, we literally, most of the drivers got a phone call from a Hirschbach employee, a Hirschbach manager, Mm -hmm. uh, whether it was like finance, training manager, operations. And welcomed us to the company. Okay. Our, our boss at Lester's, our boss at Lester's let us know nothing. He, he kept it to himself. He got paid bank. And you know, like that's, that's lightweight, one, that's lightweight kind of, you know, it, it, that, that's lightweight kind of BS, man. Because the company, if, if, you're selling, if, you, if you're selling the company or transitioning into another company, your driver should know, man. They shouldn't leave you guys out. Yeah. Like, they, they shouldn't leave you guys out in the cold like that. Like, that, that, that's how yeah. all these other companies that, that happens to just up and shut down because they're not letting their drivers know what's going on. Like, yo, are, are you closing down or no? If you are, give me a chance right. to get out. And and go somewhere mm-hmm. else instead of being stranded when y'all shut the doors. We uh we I actually had a buddy that was working with Lessers at the time. He happened to run into the uh, owner, the president of Hirschbach at one of our terminals, and you wouldn't even know it. I mean, yeah, he was wearing a Hirschbach shirt and pants, but this was like a week after we found out. Oh, and he looked at. What are you paying? He paid him over a billion dollars for the company. Mm. And nobody but the owner saw any money. Mm. Now, our finance people didn't even know this was going on. I like Our CFO knew nothing about this at Lester's. It was literally a discussion between Hirschbach and James Shapiro 
of Lester's, the owner of Lester's. And so, so when it to all, be honest, so when it all came down, um, who who reached out to you first? I mean, when it all came down, uh, when it all came down. What, June thirteenth of this year, from the chief, she calls herself the chief people officer, chief recruiter mm-hmm. of her spot. That was the first person I heard from about the buyout. We knew nothing. I actually got off the phone with her, called my dispatcher, and our dispatchers who keep track of us, who did really well, mm-hmm. were literally just finding out by the from the driver that had already been called from her spot. Mm. Nobody in the office is new. Nobody below, like, the top two people at Lesser's knew anything. Wow. We had, we had drivers, literally, I had just come off of vacation the day before I got this phone call. And I'm like, I was in the yard in Dover. I walked right past the boss man of Lesser's. He had no interest in drivers. He had interest in making money. That's all he was there to do. Now, maybe 20 years ago, it was different, but he, no, he, he had he had he, no interest. He had he, no interest in talking to drivers. He he just wanted to hurry up and get out of the business. And when the deal was sealed, he was he, he was pretty good sitting up. He like was a gone. Rack. Oh yeah, one point, I actually did some research and found some some ways of finding out. And the more people I talked to at Hirschbach. Like I've talked to some of the higher ups and they're all great people. I, I've had conversations with all kinds of people in all different departments. They literally said, yeah, he paid like $1.2 billion for your, your trucks, your drivers, your equipment, your account, everything. He bought everything that had Lester's name on it. Wow. So as far as, uh, we so, had, uh, so as far as you guys, uh, rolling, you know, rolling in the Hirschbach, uh, the young lady that I talked to, you know, because you know, you she was leased with uh, lessers. The y'all pay y'all pay scale stayed the same though, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, because of the buyout, our pay scale didn't change. I'm I'm making fifty two cents a mile. Okay. Now she's a lease driver. I make fifty two so, cents a mile. Yeah, she's yeah a, she's making yeah yeah she got percentage and, and they had. Yeah, she's at she's at percentage. Um, you could, and that was the thing with uh, with her spot when they bought Lesser out, mm-hmm. and you were a lease driver. You were given an option to go on to the her spot lease program at their pay rate and everything else, or to go on and stick with the percentage route that, that Lesser was already had. On. Right, that she was already on, and since she, most of them said, "I want to stick with what I know." Exactly, man, because oh. I think, you know, like the percentage, if I could, I, I can't remember, it's been a, it's been a while that I talked to, uh, Hirschbach, um, as far as the, uh, uh, lease, lease, uh, program goes, but I know when I talked to her, she's, she's doing like 70% and she was like, you mm-hmm. know, when yeah. she was given the choice, she's between, making. yeah, she's making money, you know, she was given the choice, like, mm-hmm. yeah, you can, you can go here. And, but you can stay where you at. She was like, nah, nah, I, I, I'll stay where I'm at because yeah. I'm making more money. I'm making more money this way than coming on and try to get with you guys. I'm all right with that. <laughs> but our, our lead, and I actually, when I came over, I was just like, I, I, at first, I was pissed because of how we were treated. How it went down, right. Like, how it went down. We had 190 drivers at, at Lester's. We had about 190 drivers. By the time all was said and done, we had 20 of them quit on site because of what the owner did. Mm-hmm. Not telling us anything. Not tell- We had 20 quit on site. So we, they actually only took over 170, uh, 170 or so drivers. Well, that's on the lesser side. We also had, there's also what's called extreme division, the extreme transportation. Mm-hmm. Which all, they, they are, they're concert carriers. They're contracted to musicians. Uh, the company is right. So we do like Blake Shelton, Kenny Chesney, guys like that. Um, they also took that over because that was 
tied under the lesser name. So in total, they took over about 200 drivers. Um, and in the first month, we had guys that they, they didn't understand how much work it actually is to onboard 200 people in like two weeks. Right. So they were trying to get every driver through a, a Hirschbach terminal in two weeks. Yeah, so they, can change, so they can change everything over, turn yeah. into trucks, um, turn everything mm-hmm. over, get you guys in the Hirschbach trucks, and, and so forth and so on. Which, he actually kept 75 of the trucks. Mm-hmm. He basically picked the 75 trucks with the lowest miles on them and kept them. Everything else, he sold off to make a little bit more um, back on what he spent, mm-hmm. which is a smart thing to do. But not here first. So what's your... So, I wish I'd have... So for four months, and you've been with Lessers for over a year, but for the four months with Hirschbach, what was your experience uh, with them? I have no issues. If, if a problem comes up, it's a quick five minute phone call. Um, that's only if it's like lunchtime and my dispatcher's on lunch. Um, I've had a couple of issues with like maintenance. They get it done. I call in, they get somebody to me right away. Uh, I called in today. I've got a fuel system issue of my, my fuel gauge is a buggy and a brand new truck. Who'd have thought? And they've already got me an appointment tomorrow up in um, Joliet, Illinois, at our terminal outside of Chicago. Um, so if you, I have a question, they answer it. So you're an OTR driver? I, I'm a 48-state OTR driver, yeah. Okay. That, that's why I wanted to talk, because the guy you had on a few months ago was a dedicated guy. Dedicated guys are paid differently than the OTR guys, and they're they're also under different uh, different parameters when it comes to their guarantee. Because OTR guys also have a guarantee. Mm-hmm. Um, but you didn't do you you didn't you, take the guarantee, did you? No, uh, it's actually automatic. Uh, the OTR guys, it's automatic. But I've never actually made that. I've always made more, and sometimes a lot more. Um, OTR guarantee is eleven hundred dollars. Uh, you have to be available. Uh, Hang on a second. Oh, it's, oh, okay. It's, it's eleven hundred dollars. So technically, the moment you pass twenty two hundred miles, you surpass the guarantee. I've made the guarantee once. Every other check after that, $1,400, 1400 1400 1200 after tax. I make money. I run. They don't shut me down. Lester's used to, like right now, I've got, let me check. I got like six hours on my week. Mm-hmm. I'd have been told by Lester's shut down. I gain 10 hours tomorrow. They, they'd have gotten me as far as they could and had a driver meet me here. Or I wouldn't have gotten this load. They'd have told me, just wait to do a 34. They'd have told me how to run my truck. First block is like, hey, you want to run? I want money. Okay, here you go. I don't wait on loads. Lester's, I used to wait upwards of six hours to get a, a pre plan. The load I'm on now, I was pre planned on Saturday. We have planners every day of the week now. So we've got to keep moving. We've got so much freight we can't keep up. So they so Herzbach now rather for you guys to move instead of sitting and waiting. Mm-hmm. But eleven they, they want eleven hundred dollars. Their whole thing eleven hundred is the guaranteed minimum. Uh. If if you start rolling if you start rolling on a Monday, mm-hmm. which is when I usually come out. Our pay week ends on Friday. Okay. So that gives me about, about four days. We have to be available for five days. Mm-hmm. In those five days, 
I'm normally sitting at about 2,700 miles. I don't stop. I run 600, 500. I mean, I looked yesterday in the last five days, uh, not including today, in the last five days, I ran 2,700 miles on recaps. Okay, that's what's up. I mean, last last, last Friday's paycheck, last Friday's paycheck was thirteen hundred dollars after tax. You you and your um, you you and your fleet manager gets uh, gets along. Basically, what you do is you 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 made yourself worthy of that driver in front uh, for your fleet manager, right? How how did you manage? How did you manage to do that within the four months that you was there with Hershbach? My first, my, when I, because when I came over, we kept our dispatchers. Okay, um, okay, I did okay. not like my, di- I, I did not like my dispatcher at Lester's. Mm-hmm. That's the whole reason I, for about a month, it took me about a month. Cause like I said, they were trying to onboard everybody as fast as possible. So it took about a month. I happened to be in our East Dubuque yard. Uh, I think I was a uh, A service. I was at an A service already. Cause I got the truck, it had 18,000 and in a month I put, uh, I put about 12,000 miles on in the truck in a month, a little over a month and I did 12 grand. Um, so I'm in the yard, I call up the driver retention side of the business and I'm like, Hey, what's it going to take for me to get a new dispatcher? They said, are you in East Dubuque? I said, yeah, come over to the headquarters in Dubuque, which is right across the river. I went in, had a conversation. She said, the lady in detention, um, her name is Lottery. First name is Lottery. She said, have you talked to anybody that you think you could get along with? I said, well, Lori, who's my dispatcher now, I said, she's helped me out a ton. Whenever I had a question, I, she, she answered. When I was new, she took care of it. She got me loads, even though I'm not her driver. And she's like, well, I'll go find out. She went and found out. Sure enough, she had a spot open on her board. Our dispatchers don't have 200 drivers. She's got 50. 47 of them are, are lease operators. Her spot used to be lease off only. Yeah. Now they're, now they're more 50 more 50. Comp- it's about more 50 comp- 50 now. Being that, they, uh, being that they brought lessers out, right? They bought lessers on. They brought uh, RTI. They brought 50 trucks on from the RTI refrigerated division in Salt Lake City. Uh, he bought another small carrier a couple years back. Um, the thing is, unlike most companies, our president still gets in a truck, has a CDL, runs freight. His wife runs with him. They see what we go through. They understand what we go through, and they want to make it as easy on us as possible. I've only worked with one other company that had a driver for a, for an owner, twenty years retired, and basically handed the reins over to to somebody else in the family. So when you so but our boss actually. So when you so when you um. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. <laughs> but when when I had the conversation with Lottery, she went and talked to Lori, mm-hmm. and Lori was like, "Yeah, I'll take him on." And I had a conver- five minute conversation with her because I had to get back over. My appointment was coming up for my oil change. Um, and she's like, "What do you want to do?" I said, "I want to burn tires off the truck." That's and she up. understood what I meant. And she's like, "Okay, we do that." I said, she said, you're going to have to prove it. I said, okay. I think my first word was something like 1,200 miles. Had a, uh, by the time she got it to me, it was already about six hours behind schedule. I made it on time. She's like, okay. And for the first two weeks, she ran the mess out of me. Putting everything she could on me. And I proved to her, hey, this truck don't stop. I call her every time I get a load when I'm going down the road. She runs through the load on uh, with me on the phone. And I basically, she, she runs me like a lease operator. 
She runs all of her drivers like they're lease operators. Lease operators at her spot have the right.